So let me ask a somewhat theoretical question. What are the odds of a meteor slamming through your garage and punching a hole in your beloved Pontiac? One might say pretty astronomical, but in 1938, a man from Illinois experienced just that. And needless to say, he wasn't happy or driving excitement afterwards. The Ben Old Meteor. Before we begin though and get to the real meat and potatoes of this video, some of the footage that I use is from this puppy right here. This is the Darwin M2 by Beaver Lab. It's a microscope, it's a great microscope, and I use it to take footage of one of the meteors that we're going to be examining. This thing's pretty awesome. You can find the link to this in the pinned comment or my channel bio. September 29th, 1938. And if I get off my butt, this video should post on the 86th anniversary of a rock flying through a roof and into the Pontiac of one Edward McCain of Benald, Illinois. It was shortly after 9 a.m. on that fall day in 1938 when Mr. McCain and his neighbor heard a sound that they likened to a prop plane in a power dive and a 4.3 by 3.5 by 3.1 inch nigh four pound rock from space slammed through the roof through the Pontiac, through the seats, and actually rebounded off the Pontiac's muffler. 200 miles away, Ben Hur Wilson of the Joliet Astronomical Society hears of the meteor fall over the radio and makes contact with Mr. McCain. A few weeks later, Wilson made the 200 mile trip and after verifying that it was a legitimate fall, called Frank M. Prusel, a fellow society member, to make his way to Benold. Now keep in mind, this was 1938 and only the second confirmed meteor fall in Illinois at the time. We had no idea where meteors originated from, and preserved nature of the fall granted Wilson and Prusel some unique opportunities and observations. Observation number one, the meteor left no scorch marks and had zero flight orientation. Normally, when a meteor maintains speed upon entry, a cone or, quote, orientation like this weathers. The lack of both of these suggested that the meteor fell at terminal velocity instead of slamming with the full force of re-entry. A fact backed up by the fact that the garage was still standing. So today we know that meteorites which aren't burning up in our atmosphere as they come in tend to slow down and reach terminal velocity as opposed to maintaining speed if they're not burning up in our atmosphere. But this was new information at the time, and, and something that hadn't really been observed before. Now the opportunity lied in how the meteor fell and damaged the vehicle and the garage. Using string, Wilson and Prusel were able to roughly determine the angle the meteor hit, and factoring in that the meteor had slowed down terminal velocity, they were able to, quote, guesstimate roughly where the meteor came from. At the time, nobody knew that the majority of meteorites came from an asteroid field. The line that was drew basically pointed to the Big Dipper. However, Wilson realized that the line he measured probably didn't point to the exact origin of the Benold meteorite. As the space rock reached terminal velocity in Earth's atmosphere, its trajectory would have dropped more steeply. Also, since it had no apex, it might have tumbled as it fell, possibly following a disruption in the upper atmosphere. Wilson put out a call to other amateur organizations seeking additional observations of the fall in hopes of discovering its origin, but it was without success. 75 years later, another unique opportunity arose with the Chelyabinsk, Chelyabinsk, there we go, meteorite falling over Russia. Thanks to many, many dash cams capturing footage, scientists were able to determine that the meteorite came from the Apollo group in our own asteroid belt. While Wilson and Prusel's string may seem rudimentary by comparison, their first of its kind measurement was fortuitous according to Wilson. Mr. McCain and his Pontiac's response is not recorded. <laughs> So what type of meteor is the Benold meteor? There are tons of different meteor classifications, but the Benold was specifically classified as an H5 ordinary chondrite. A chondrite is a stony meteor comprised of chondrules, which are bits and pieces of debris from the formation of our solar system. The H delineates that it was a high iron content meteor, and L would signify low. There are also LL, which are very low iron meteors. The meteor on screen, a piece of the Elmenia, an L5 by comparison, 
uh, this is one that fell last year, the number signifies the specific chondrite classification. One and two are abnormal and other types of weird meteors. Carbonaceous chondrites, for example. Three can be carbonaceous, but three is typically the most well-preserved, most significant and well-defined chondrules. Very well-defined. Class four is less so, class five even less so, and six are barely distinct. Apparently there's a class seven now. So the Benold is a stony meteor with somewhat distinct chondrules and a high iron content. It's the 86th anniversary today, September 29th, of this interesting story, but there's even more interesting astronomy news as it's also the day that the Earth gets a second moon. Well, at least until November. I don't know what it's made out of, but until November a meteor caught in the Earth's gravity will make a complete orbit, a requirement to be a moon before escaping in November. That starts today, on the anniversary of its mm, fallen comrade. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see this new moon without equipment. But what do you think? Have you seen the Benold Meteor before? It's currently housed at the Field Museum. If you made it this far, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel. Also, check the description and pinned comment for links to this video sponsor as well as my Patreon and Mineral the Month Club. It all helps keep me going to bring you more videos about cool rocks. Have a good day and stay shiny.